and uh, welcome to the removing the distance the distance learning webinar by uh, global montessori network my name is magdalena ponurska and i am the co-founder of the global montessori network and the director of operations at the montessori school rochester today uh we have super exciting topic and uh even more super exciting guest, uh, Judy Girl, um, and she will introduce herself in a moment. With me, I also, and she's from our school, um, Montessori School Rochester, and Joanne Chango, the co-founder of the Global Montessori Network. Uh, before we start, uh, just a couple of notes about the format. Uh, we're going to do the session for 45 minutes and leave 15 minutes for question and answers. If you have any questions, please type them into the chat um, box. I do monitor it. And then um, we answer the questions at the end. The session is recorded and will be available as soon as we can process it, and it will be available on the Global Montessori Network. Uh, thank you for joining us, and uh, Joanne, if you can take it over. Hi, everyone. Again, as Magdalena said, thank you for joining us today. I'm Joanne Shango. I am the head of school at the Montessori School Rochester here in Rochester Hills, Michigan. And today joining us, we have uh, Judy Gurrell, as she is a primary guide here at the Montessori School Rochester. She's one of the team members that led the distance learning platform for our students over the spring and is a returning guide for this fall as we get ready for a number of eventualities. Judy, thank you for joining us. Do you mind introducing yourself a little bit, telling us a little bit about your background? And sure, yeah. Hi, thank you, Joanne. Um, as Joanne said, my name is Judy Gorell. I've been a primary guide for 12 years now. So um, time flies very fast. Um, I also have experience prior to becoming a, um, a certified Montessori teacher in um, infant and in toddler. So I kind of started a little um, in that arena um, assisting and then decided um, that I wanted to pursue becoming a guide. So. 12 years ago, 2008, I was certified and um, the rest is history. So I've been at um, MSR for two years. So it's been a, a joy and we've um, we've had some fun uh, these past few months um, with our with our distance learning platform. So I guess that's what we'll probably be talking a little bit about today. Absolutely. So uh, Judy, when we first started uh, back in the spring, it was, um, we had to pivot uh, really quickly. And in the midst of that pivot, we were all dealing with our own emotions as we were trying to understand this pandemic that uh, came about. And uh, so our own emotions and our own feelings, as well as trying to prepare for uh, the distance learning program so that we could still support our families. And I remember way back then, one of the things I said at the very beginning was, we need to find a way to remove the distance from distance learning. At that time, what were the challenges that you were experiencing with your emotions uh, and how you were grappling with the entire pandemic and school closing abruptly uh, to also trying to remove the distance from distance learning? Um, I'd, I'd have to say emotionally in the very beginning because the, of the unknown and because um, we didn't know which direction from day to day that we would be going into. Um, there was anxiety. There was um, some anxiety, some stress, some tension. Um, but we have a really fabulous team that um, teaches us how to kind of cope with that. Magdalena, thank you for that. Because she's kind of helped, she helped us um, kind of... Uh, bring ourselves back down to, you know, thinking uh, rationally and thinking um, positively. So um, aside from feeling a little stressed out and unsure of the unknown, um, it kind of made that beginning portion a little 
more, um, a little more doable, I guess you might say, or um, at least we, we were all on the same page together. We all knew that we were doing this together. And with that, when you have togetherness and you have um, camaraderie and you have um, um, a team that works really well together, it it makes all the difference in the world. And um, it did. And, and I, I have said this quote to you before, Magdalena, and the quote is, um, when we all started this, you had said, and I and I remember it so clearly, um, you won't be the same person that you were in in a month's time. I'm not sure what time frame you gave it, but in a week's time or a month's time, whatever that time frame was, you won't be the same person. And um, I'm not the same person. I, there's there's been some changes um, that I feel I've kind of gone through because of this experience. So. Um, you were right. You had really good perspective of that. And um, there was probably the fear of the unknown as far as how are we going to do this from our computers? I mean, we are hands-on um, teachers and guides. We Everything is hands-on for us. How are we ever going to make that, that distance um, seem not there? It seems impossible. But... Um, I think what happened is that um, when we became more comfortable and our parents and our, our students became more comfortable, I think that um, we were starting to kind of break down that distance a little bit and, and ease everybody, ease their mind just a little bit, just a tiny bit with what was happening with everyone. So um, I guess just our presence, um, I did have comments from, um, from parents and from staff that said, um, it, you know, it, it really does help. It does help that, you know, you communicate with us. We, you know, the children see your faces every day. Um, that is something reassuring, uh, comforting and consistent. So, um, having that happen every day, I think was helping to put some parents at ease too. And, and it helped us greatly. I would tell parents a lot that, um, you know, we miss seeing the children in person. But if what we have right now is to see them on our screen and communicate and, and kind of bridge that distance just with our presence and their presence to us, then I think that, you know, it's a, it's a win-win. Um, it still is a challenge, you know, it still was going to be a challenge, but um, it was, it was something, it was something to hold on to. Absolutely. I think what was uh, the most interesting, especially when I looked at the challenges, and you talked about those emotional challenges and the support that uh, through a strong administration uh, guided by Magdalena, offering the guides that kind of emotional support was really important. But then there was the second component. It wasn't just how are we going to take a hands-on learning uh platform that we do every day in the classroom, but how? <laughs> the actual technical tools of working through the computer using a program like Zoom, uh, creating materials, how were we going to do that? Uh, what, what was most pivotal during that time in, in learning those technical uh, programs learning those technical programs and applying them, what, where, where did that guidance uh, come from or how, how was it useful when you were learning as you were doing? You, you had to do it three days later, right? Mm -hmm. um, I guess it, I'd have to say it goes back to our administration, um, having the confidence that we could do it, um, collaborating with them and with our staff, um, sometimes just trial and error. Um, maybe I didn't get onto Zoom at the right time. Maybe I was a little late in getting there because of a computer issue that I was waiting for and making me very um, uh, nervous because I, I know I've got to get, I've got to be on time to, you know, to, uh, to be there for the kids when they're expecting me to be there. But if you didn't know that your computer just didn't want to wake up on a Monday morning because it's just, uh, it's, um, it wants to take the weekend off and continue on. But I think, uh, you know, 
I think some of those things just happened as far as um, figuring them out. I Google, I would Google things. I have a supportive family that would help me. Um, um, tech savvy children that would say, mom, do it this way or look at this and, uh, or check this out or they would, they would support me. So um, I had, I had a, a lot of support. I never ever felt that I was um, on an island by myself and that I couldn't, um, I couldn't navigate because I always, always knew, I always knew um, if I sent that email to my administrators, I got my answer all the time. It was like that when we were in school um, and face to face and it, more so um, I'd have to say when we had to be um, on our computers, but um, that's never wavered. And so that's been always a really strong point for our school and it's been very beneficial for me personally. So thank you for that. Oh, that's wonderful. You know, when we think about the idea of quarantining, when we were asked to stay so separate uh, to maintain that distance, there's still we're still talking about social distancing. And yet you really refer to the idea of you've gotten closer or you felt more connected through this distance, whether it was with your family and support or with your administration. I think also with your colleagues, with the team members, as you guys were collaborating and working together, uh, how how did that unfold and, and how Magdalena moved to what worked well? And I'm going to say that it still connects to the opportunities. Uh, wh- how, did, how did that uh, really affect you when you talk about that you have indeed changed. You are not the same person you were when mm-hmm. this started back in March. Uh, uh, how did what worked well, that those things uh, affect you, and how did you maximize them to offer them up to other people, just knowing your nature, uh, how you offered it back again? Um, what What worked really well and what we had to develop very quickly was um, our ability to collaborate well and um, and it did it it just it, it was a very natural process. It fell into place um, when we realized I mean I would say in the beginning, you know um, a format that we wanted to follow was a little bit of a challenge because um, it, it, we, we just didn't find, we weren't in our groove and we didn't find what was really working for what parents would say, oh, I didn't get this information. I didn't get this printout. I didn't get this email. So um, I feel like as as the weeks were going by and pretty early, actually, I'd say by you know week three, we were already pretty solid with getting our, um, our curriculum set up, our process, um, to, to get all the information to who it needed to get to, to have it approved, to have it, um, you know, checked over and make sure we had all the information parents would need. Um, but all of that goes back to uh, how we work together. And I still look back at it and I still, I, I'm in awe, I'm in amazement of how well it it just all went together. We knew what we had to do. We knew everyone's strong points. We knew um, areas that maybe someone was struggling with. Maybe they were struggling with some emotional issues at the time and um, they needed some some support. There was um, one of our our team members that, you know, was struggling with a family member that, you know, was ill. And you know, we all rallied and we helped and we just, we just went in and said, okay, we'll take care of this. I'll take care of that. And you can take care of what you need to take care of. So, um, I think each, each of us probably had a little health crisis at some point, um, where we all needed to just say, okay, you know, um, that, that person needs the rest. They need the emotional rest or they need the physical rest. Um, we'll take it over from here. And it was a temporary thing. And, um, we, you know, got back on track and then we were all back together and like a locomotive, just, we just kept going. We just kept going. And I like how we were able to really um, um, hone in on um, specific things that we wanted to present and, and how we came together to put those things together. Because when you're doing something in your classroom, it's simple to, you know, gather the materials you need. But knowing that parents might not have those materials, 
they might not have um, access to some of those things. We tried to make it very uh, accessible, leaving things at our school that they could come pick up, offering to um, print out uh, worksheets and print uh, activities that we had planned. Um, we did some very ambitious um, presentations and uh, some materials and, and activities, but <laughs> they had fun. They, they have a lot of fun. We had fun. It, it really was. I, I think that, you know, you really pegged, like by week three, we definitely hit a groove and things were different from the way I had imagined, the way Magdalena had imagined, uh, because as a team, you guys were on, on the ground. You guys were on the front lines, as they say, putting it into action and really working together and communicating to uh, not only address what wasn't working, but bonded in a way that you guys found the solutions amongst each other and Magdalena and I had often uh, remarked the team grew more close-knit together as we were forced so far apart and mm -hmm. that for True. me uh, was a measure to I think the magic of Montessori there was an regardless of how each of us felt and what we were all going through with just struggling with the pandemic, there was a commitment to the children and to the families that I think when I looked at all of the guides as you guys worked together, uh, that commitment superseded everything and then in a way eased our emotional fears as well, our personal fears as well. Uh, would you, could you address that at all? Um, yeah, I, I feel like our um, our commitment to our families and our students was very, very strong. And I know in the beginning, I'll have to say, I, I felt um, very um, emotional about our, our, um, our distance um, because, you know, working with children for me, um, you, there's just that bond that's developed and it's developed, especially when you have a student in your classroom for the first year, the second year, the third year, you have those children for a long time. You know those families really well. And um, I, I feel like in the beginning that that, um, that when we were severed, you know, our, our, um, our presence together, um, it, it was it was emotional. It was very, very emotional for me. Um, so, you know, having the having our connection I felt was kind of like our, our lifeline in a way, you know, it was help for, helpful for me and my support too. Um, it was, you know, it's not just one sided. Uh, it, it felt like um, it was something I needed to, to kind of feel like there's some normalcy still here a little bit. Let, let's try to keep this um, somewhat normal and um, cohesive and um, calm and, you know, we can weather this storm, we can do this. And, um, you know, I know parents were looking, they were looking at us for that. They were, they were hoping that, you know, things would improve and get better as far as, you know, um, the pandemic. But as, you know, as the weeks went on, we just had to kind of forge through and, and, and try to keep that, um, you know, keep them, keep them up, keep, keep the children engaged and um and reassure the parents it they needed reassurance we all needed reassurance so yeah. i um, think um at know, the we, we just did the best that we could yeah it was it was interesting because uh at the beginning we had parents emailing and letting us know while saying how appreciative they were they were letting us know what wasn't working and that communication rather than bringing us down it seemed to uh put a fire under us to fix it and make it work. It was different than the just trust us in the classroom. We were all kind of in uh, an unknown territory. And the input from the parents, uh, while on the one hand was like, oh. on the other hand, it allowed us to make adaptations so that by week three, we had transformed in such a way that uh, so, so many um, of the glitches 
began to disappear and we ended up having even deeper connections with the families at home. I will tell you, and I don't know if you, I don't know if I shared this with you, Judy, but one parent contacted us and said, we love what you're doing. Uh, you're going above and beyond what anybody else uh, that we see is doing. Their older child is uh, in, uh, was in the local public school. And they said, way above and beyond. However, uh, Leo's still feeling a little bit disconnected. And that was at the beginning when we were sharing groups you know, where all three leads were together. And we split into pods, if you will. Uh, that's a new term. And uh, he saw Miss Judy. Leo saw Miss Judy. And the email we'd received was he almost fell over. He was so excited. And his engagement in the program was tripled. And it was due to that connection he already had had with you. Did you feel that or get that from other students? Had I shared? I'm sorry if I didn't share that with you before. Um, I th I did get that feedback from um, from some parents, and I, you know, that that would always, um, if I did get some feedback, I would always um, listen to that and and try to adapt, as you said, make some adaptations and changes um, to best suit that child. Um, that was that was challenging um, when um, a child, you know, parents would contact us and say that they're not, you know, this, they're having difficulty. And, and, and so it makes you just turn and think, okay, what can I do differently? Uh, what, how, how do I engage just that child and you have a screen full of children, 20 plus children, and you know, you're trying to in, engage them all together. Um, but you know that there's those few that you're still concerned about because, you know, you can see that they either leave the screen or, you know, it, it gets muted or, you know, certain things. So um, it, it, I guess it was just trying to, um, fill their needs the best you can in the same way that we would if we were in school together. Um, again, it's just a different form. It takes on a different form of how you're going to do that. And um, it might mean um, tailoring some of your presentations, knowing that this particular child has an interest in this and you know, the others will be fine, you know, if you alter something, but really maybe just honing in on that one thing, that one, um, kind of material that you know sparks that child. So um, it, it's sort of like just diverting down this down this path where you might turn to the left, you might turn to the right, you might go straight a little while, you might, it's just diversions all around and um, navigate it the best, the best that you can for the whole, but you still, I don't wanna leave those, those ones that, that were still struggling. I, I, it was still heavy on my heart and I still felt like I need to address that. Um, the best that we can, the best that we can. And sometimes, you know, even the best that we, our best efforts sometimes, you know, it, there was a lot of things perhaps going on in their home too, that, you know, we may not have um, been able to, uh, to help or um, address, but um, for the time we had them, if I, if I saw that, um, you know, there was, there was smiles and there was laughter and there was maybe some dancing when we were singing or, um, you know, whatever, whatever connection I got, it, it, it made me, it made me feel a lot, a lot better for that. So, More um, empowered or, um, yeah, it, it increased the feedback from the parents, uh, especially when they shared pictures or they sent emails, if they shared pictures on, you know, our, our Facebook page, uh, it really did. It, it made me feel even more dedicated to the cause. And yet we had a reliance on the parents in a very different way than we ever have before. Um, mm -hmm. The We needed their feedback. We needed their observations in a way that I don't believe we needed before. In the past, they needed our observations. And so that switch, I think, uh, transformed some of our relationships with the parents at home. In addition to things like uh, they were writing to us and saying, I didn't know my child could do this. I didn't know my child could do this. And I feel like that 
that home school connection uh, became maximized. It was one of the real benefits of uh, this distance learning platform, and I believe it was another way that we removed the distance from distance learning, uh, or at least were able to optimize in that regard. Yes. Did you feel, um, were you, were you able to use some of the, uh, some of those insights from the parents or even things that you maybe saw on the screen? I know that when I subbed a couple of times, I would hear a child say, mom, I need a snack. And so I would kind of pause what we were doing and I would remind all the children that they were capable of going into the kitchen and, and getting a cup and getting a drink of water, getting their snack. Uh, did you find that you received some insights into the home dynamic that benefited you? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, for sure. Yes. Um, and I touched on exactly what you said, and that was um, uh, things that I know I wouldn't have a student that would be uh, requesting of me in class, but they would request that of mom or dad, and I would think, wow, that's very, very different. So um, just as you said, you know, um, our ops, we then could observe their home, their, their home situation where parents might observe our classroom uh, environment. Now the tables were turned somewhat and we can see what's happening at home and certain behaviors, um, but there was still a lot of similarities, I would say, as far as um, children with um, levels of concentration and, and how if the concentration at school was um, a challenge for them, I could see that it, would, it was still a challenge at home too. Um, so there was similarities, many similarities and things that um, I had learned from uh, talking to parents at conferences, but actually seeing it then it did confirm Oh, okay. Yes, those things do are happening at home as well. But um, yeah, some of those surprising things <laughs> that I think, oh my goodness, they have way more independence um, in school than than I than they do at home. But um, it, it's it's their home environment, you know. So that's that's what they're used to, and um, we we just it was hard for me. It, it's hard for for me to you know like be I, I don't want to be that role or give that role that says you know uh, mom and dad um you need to do this or that um it, it's kind of a fine line for me so i would just maybe say in a positive way probably like you had said joanne that is um well you can go get that snack i know you know exactly where it's at that's that would be easy to go get that and bring your water with you too and you know so i guess saying it in that way um yeah, I just felt sometimes like, well, it is their home. You know, I don't want to <laughs> fringe on um, making demands, but it would be very different in, our, in my classroom, I would say, in some circumstances. Yeah, and then some children really uh, showed their parents something new of themselves, and I think it became an opportunity uh, for many of the parents, particularly of the children that were older, uh, to see how capable and independent their children were, which is where we were getting those statements that said, I didn't know my child could do it. I know you weren't comfortable with like a bold statement that says parents back off, but uh, one of your colleagues uh, said she was saying, mom, now don't you pick up that scissor. He can do it all by himself. Go ahead, step away. Yeah. This isn't your presentation. Right. Um, and, you know, a different approach to what you would say or what I would say, but it started to develop the message for the parents that um, when you do for a child, you're giving them the message that perhaps you do it better. And when you give them the opportunity uh, to practice it, that that is their work. And I think so many parents started to discover it was the process. They were looking for a product and they were very sure that their child had to complete something. And they started to mm -hmm. realize that the learning was happening in the process, not in the completed product. Um, oftentimes the product didn't resemble what the parents thought it should. And it might not have bothered them during the school year because they didn't know what they thought it was supposed to look like. And But seeing our curriculum and seeing the work, they were expecting 
a mastered ability instead of the practice it takes to get to that point. Uh, did you experience that? And did parents ask you for any coaching in, in that regard? Yeah, um, there were parents that would um, ask me um, how to handle a certain situation. Um, how do I handle when my child um, doesn't want to come uh, to class or come uh, and engage? Um, what kinds of things could I say? What could we do differently? Um, I guess I would go back to saying to that parent, um, um, the materials and some of the activities that we would be um, uh, planning what might lend to their engagement. So, um, you know, on these particular days, that's why it was important for us to have our curriculum uh, way in advance and, and give parents a head up, heads up as to what we were going to be um, presenting. So they would, you know, they would understand what that was. So I would like to kind of address that and, and say, well, on these particular days, you know, I know that so-and-so really is interested in, you know, dinosaurs. Let's say we were going to do something with dinosaurs. And um, so I, you know, we would, I would try to encourage that. I would also um, give parents um, words that we would use in our classroom um, for, you know, perhaps they're saying, well, um, um, you know, this is this issue is happening or, um, you know, they didn't know exactly how to handle a, a discipline problem or something. And I would always like to share with parents uh, about giving choices and how effective uh, giving a, a choice to children it empowers them and they feel like they have more control over it. So that would also be advice that I would give to parents. So they, they were on occasion, yes, asking me um, how to handle a certain situation and, um, you know, to the best of my ability, I give them actual words to say, you know, like say this sentence, you know, this, this is what they hear at school. This is going to be familiar to them. And they hear me say it and hear other teachers and, and um, people say it. So um, use those same words at home. And, um, you know, it, it, it's not a guarantee, but it's just, a, it's a path to take and, um, and see if you have some results from, you know, something familiar for them. I fully agree. When you now look towards, uh, you've been off for the summer for the most part. Well, not off. You've been doing other things that satisfy uh, your personal needs. But uh, you haven't been in, in the classroom or in the distance learning. Uh, but we're getting ready, right? Fall is around the corner. For us, it means at this point, we're, we're planning on being on campus. How do you prepare for that Um and knowing that we are still in the pandemic and how uh, thankfully Michigan is no longer a hot zone. Uh, there's still cases, but thankfully it has settled down and the hospitals are, are feeling comfortable, but we're preparing to ideally be on campus, but we also have to think of all eventualities uh, as well. How, how are you preparing? What's your journey been like as you begin to put your school, your school cap on? Um, so preparing, do, are you talking about preparing emotionally how I, I'm going to uh, work through that? Is that what you're referring to? I, I think it's a combination of different things. You know, when you look at uh, how we went through all the phases that you went through uh, in the spring and what we may encounter for the fall. Uh, it might just be the idea of, as the screen says, uh, what would I do differently, uh, which I think is one of the best ways to prepare for the start of something new. Well, I guess I'd have to look at um, my past experiences um, and use that as a guide. Um, how I've done things in the past. I think there's going to be a, a tweak as far as um, our daily routine and what that's going to look like um, coming into the school. Um, and, you know, based on, based on um, information that I've been reading uh, that our school is presenting to our parents, um, it's, 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 a, it's, a lot of, um, it's a lot of reassurance and a lot of um, procedures that help 
that reassurance. So, um, you know, we'll prepare as we always do. And every year provides unique situations anyway. Um, this one being probably the most unique we've had ever, but, um, it's, you know, we're used to, we're a community that's used to having uh, protocols and things in place. Um, we uh, have our routines and we have them for a reason. So I think just when we come together and we, um, we talk about what, what specific d differences there will be with this now, um, it just goes right into our repertoire of how we um, naturally prepare for um, our students to enter the classroom and how we prepare um, our lessons for them and our curriculum for them. Um, it, it's going to look a little different. We're going to look a little different with wearing, you know, face coverings and things. But um, again, it, it's, it's navigating, it's just, it's navigating something new, but based on our solid principles and based on our, our solid knowledge of what we naturally always do anyway. So um, bringing in those new elements, um, yeah, it's maybe a little uncomfortable, but we can, um, we've worked through a lot so far um, from spring until even now. And, you know, um, so I, I feel like we just, we just move forward and we prepare based on the knowledge we have and our past knowledge. Excellent. Uh, the good news is we, we went through summer camp and it's been very successful and we made adaptations. Uh, the groups are a little bit smaller. Uh, the number of students in the building are smaller than what we'll have in the fall, but we really were able, again, in the first week or two, uh, to be able to assess and work together as a team to see what we were putting into place that worked and what wasn't working, and we weren't afraid to make adaptations because we felt it was very important for us in the summer as well as in preparation for the fall to uh, make sure any protocols we put into place were things we could actually do because you can't mitigate risk with a protocol that you can't maintain. You're actually increasing risk at that point uh, trying to uh, have a protocol that you can't maintain or keep up successfully. And so we've made some great changes uh, to some of the protocols and really have had a successful summer camp uh, with everything we've implemented. So I think we'll be in very good shape for the fall, but there's gonna be more classrooms and there's gonna be more students. So we're gonna have to be ready to pivot a little bit. There are many programs though, many of our colleagues around the world are uh, returning to school or are in school uh, through distance learning platform. They've gone virtual rather than being on campus. Through the experiences that you've had, the successes and some of the challenges that we addressed and overcame, what advice would you give uh, to, to your colleagues around the world in regards to maintaining a virtual program? Oh, maintaining a virtual program. Hmm. Um, well, dedication, dedication is a big part of it. Um, when, when we started, you know, not knowing where we were going to go, um, you know, that, that unknown element was, um, a big factor. And I, I think in how some of us were feeling uh, a little uneasy about, um, but moving moving forward with the virtual, it it's it's dedication. It, it's de it's dedication, just like dedicating um, our our efforts when we have um, you know in in school learning. Um, it it takes, as you said, Joanne. It just it it takes you know some modifications. It, it, it naturally we'll just have to have some modifications done that. Um, you may not have done before, but if you if you're dedicated and you stick with it, and you have a really good team that can work well together, um, I think those things can make it, you know, doable and workable and positive. If there's one thing that you believe everybody should have 
in a virtual learning or distance learning platform, what would it be? One thing. One thing. I know I will say the very one thing that stands out the most for me is teamwork. Um, I'd say that in just about any um, situation or predicament that um, kind of puts you in a um, strange and new uh, place. When you have people that um, you can rely on and people that um, help you lift you up, um, work with you, work with your, your bad points as well as your good points. Um, I think that that's the number one thing that you must have. I fully agree. It's, it's really interesting. It goes back to just the title of this, uh, this webinar that it's the idea of removing the distance. So to have a team that you can depend on and you can't actually hold their hand or they can't actually hold your hand and yet you are united and holding each other up and supporting each other through the distance um, is really what makes the distance disappear and allows us to maintain very important connections with our students. So. Uh, yeah, I have nothing else to add to that. That was, that that would have been my answer too. So yeah, yeah. It, I think it would be really easy um, to have chaos and to have um, people that feel like they just kind of fall apart because um, it, it's too it's too big a burden. It's too big a mountain to climb, and um, I think we just chiseled away at it in tiny little pieces. And now that we look back, it's like, wow, we really did that. We really, really did that. And um, as I said with Magdalena, you're a different person after you've gone through that. So, um, yeah. I, it, I just love, uh, uh, Judy, I love being right. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> And now I have it on, on tape. Yes. Um, could you uh, talk a little bit more about the technical aspects of what worked well? So we have guides uh, with us that are interested um, in um, the format. Uh, so what worked really well for you uh, in terms of format? They are um, uh, three to six um, guides. Um, so I think you are you are the perfect person to address what what we tried, what we experimented with, what worked, what didn't work, uh, and how the day went and the flow. Um, so the way our program worked was we had a two and a half hour time span. Um, we had four presentations each day. Um, those four presentations. Um, in for my classroom were divided uh, for for me. So I was doing two. Um, the other lead teacher was doing two. So we uh, we divided them that way. We just picked which two we wanted to do. Perhaps we'd have a science or we'd have a language and maybe she wanted to pick the math or um, our art. So each day we delegated who wanted to do what and based on just your interest or what you felt your strong point was. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, you just had to tweak, well, maybe I didn't really want to do art that day, but you just do it because, you know, we're, we're stretching ourselves and we're learning. So um, we have our four presentations. Now, during that time, um, we would start just like we would start our class time. We would have our introduction. We would sing a good morning song. We would, um, have the children, um, you know, say hello to each other because they can see each other on the screen. So there, there was that time before we actually started class where they could have a little one-on-one um, -on -one time with each other and, you know, oh, look at my stuffed animal or, oh, look at my cat in the background. So they, they love sharing. They love sharing. And sometimes that was the biggest challenge is that we couldn't have everyone um, share all the time. We made time for that. We had... Um, our, uh, um, our show and tell, we, we would do things like that on occasion, or we'd have pajama day. 
So uh, to get back to our, um, our daily routine, um, after our sharing was over, we'd start our class and then we would have, sing our good morning song. Um, we might do some, um, some fun songs, the wheels on the bus or um, head, shoulders, knees and toes, or um, maybe a finger play or um, read a story. So it was different all the time. It just depended on, um, you know, maybe uh, if we had a theme for that particular week or that day. You know, you might find a story about that or a rhyme about it. Um, so then after that, we would break for about 10 minutes um, after we had our introductions and all that. So uh, we break for 10 minutes and um, parents would know what we were going to be doing because we had sent them the information. We had sent them the printouts. We had sent them the agenda for the week. So they knew what was coming up. Um, we'd come back on and um, we'd start with a presentation, you know, and sometimes children had things ready and sometimes they didn't. So you just have to kind of go with, okay, we're here, here's, we're going to go. And your timing, you have to kind of watch the children. Um, I was fortunate because I had, a, um, I had support and I had uh, Miss Deanne helping me um, say, oh, so-and-so is not uh, ready or they have their hand up. Um, because when, once you get going into your presentation, just like in our class, you kind of concentrate on that. And um, even though in class you might have interruptions, um, this way, not so many. However, you know, as a guide, you, you really, you know, you get into it. So um, you, you do your presentations. We have breaks again, um, probably every um, maybe 30 minutes again, we'd have another break. Um, I always told children they could go to the bathroom anytime. Um, and they like to have their snacks too many times with them. So they would have that. Sometimes our um, practical life presentations included making a snack. So we would uh, strategically put that at a time where uh, it'd be snack time. So that might be our second presentation. And then after that presentation, they made their peanut butter, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. They could eat it. And then we'd take a break. And then um, we would come back maybe do another presentation, depends on what day it was, because we also included music, we included art. Um, and on those days, we have to really kind of finesse and, and, and piece together how our, our day would go, um, because we always wanted those elements as, um, as another part of our day. Um, and then at the end of our two and a half hour cycle, uh, it would be close to, um, where did we go to noon? Yeah, we went to noon, 9.30 to noon. So, um, gosh, sometimes it felt like we never had enough time and we'd run over like, and then sometimes you were a little fast and you wouldn't have enough or you'd have uh, more time left over. Um, but however it worked out, um, we always wanted to make sure we, we put in, um, what we planned for that day. And, um, it, it just depended on, on the speed. And it depends on the children's input too. You know, there might be a lot of questions. There might be a lot of comments. There might be a lot of sharing. Um, there, there might be a lot of elements that you, you don't uh, anticipate. So um, you just go with it, just like we do in class. You just go with it. So within that two and a half hour time, they weren't staring at that screen for two and a half hours. There was still a lot of independent work time. Would you... Uh, talk a little bit about that and were kids required to leave their independent work to come back for a presentation or were you respecting their rhythm just like you might in the classroom? Um, yeah, you would respect whatever uh, concentration they have on that. If, if we had to switch and go on to our next presentation, um, and, and I would tell parents all the time that um, if your child is really into um the writing, let's say we were doing a writing exercise, if they are really into their writing right now, please, you know, let that happen, let that go, because um, that's what we would do in our classroom. That's exactly what we would do. Um, we, we didn't have that luxury, you know, during our two and a half hours. We, um, we, we just didn't have that luxury, although we tried to incorporate that as much as we could. Um, it wasn't always something that, uh, you know, was in the you know, it, it wasn't the best scenario, but we did try to protect that. We, we and explained to parents, please protect that time that your child is is really concentrating on something. And oftentimes we get a, a comment or we get a um, an email later that says they really loved that science experiment. 
and they wanted to do it over and over and over again. And that's wonderful. We yes. had some really fun at science experiments, you know, blowing up the balloon and, and letting it run on the line across the room. They wanted to do it over and over. Then I would feel like, then let's do it, you know, like maybe we shouldn't do that next presentation because this is so fun and they're, they're getting um, so much more engagement out of it. But um, it, it was, it was, it was a challenge sometimes when I knew it was something they really, really liked to do. But yeah. We, we made and, through. We made and it. then the, in the afternoons, uh, what were your recommendations for the rest of the day? For the rest of the day? Yeah. I know you um, guys did uh, a lot of engagement with parents for what to do with the kids in the afternoons. Yeah. Um, so if you can talk about that. Yeah. Um, well, af do you mean after our class time? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm like off camera now, right? <laughs> off camera. <laughs> off yeah. camera. Um, well, that's when we would spend our time um, networking and coming up with our curriculum plans. If we um, needed to uh, engage with parents, whether a phone call or emails, um, we would take time to do that. Um, uh, you know, researching um, uh, how to create something that we would naturally do at school how do we create that online how do we create that so parents you know might have access to those materials and make it simple but yet you know um challenging you know for the student and something different and something new um that was always something that was in the backs of our minds like how can we go you know all together when we were all talking oh we can't you know how are we going to do that and then Someone would say, well, we could use this instead, use this material, let's try that. Oh yeah, we can do that. Yeah. So um, it, it just, it was just brainstorming. So that we spent our afternoons a, a lot um, preparing, a lot of preparation um, to, to have, to get it right. Yeah, the, the collaborative uh, work that you and the other guides, there were four of you, I believe, that were all working together with Miss Maddie, our elementary guide, popping in a little bit um, uh, so that she wasn't totally <laughs> isolated. But uh, with all of that collaborative work that you guys were doing in the afternoon, what I'd noticed uh, for a lot of the children, I was with elementary one day a week, and I know Miss Maddie was doing this, and I believe you guys were doing as well, was some coaching work with the parents of, so this afternoon after you have lunch or after you take a nap, how about you go on a nature walk and look for X, Y, or Z, or things that start with B. The I Spy games are... Um, uh, going out and finding things. I guess that's I Spy as well. Um, those seem to be really successful during the work period when we were on Zoom, but uh, we were coaching the parents on things like that to do in the afternoon. What were some of the other ideas uh, in regards to whether it was practical life or science or nature walks, things like that? Were you encouraging the parents and the children to do um, outdoors? Um, one of them was um, planting uh, when we would do you know some botany studies and we would we were learning parts of the, of the flower parts of the plant um, we I'd encourage them to go out and find those things and we'd always kind of prompt them um, the day before and it was always written in the curriculum too as to what we would be doing but that would be one of the last things um, I would always try to kind of review what we did for the class time today and what we're going to be doing tomorrow. These are some of the things that we're going to do tomorrow. We're going to be dissecting a, a flower. Um, if you have a flower in your garden at home, you know, bring it in so we can we'll do that together. Um, so there was a lot of uh, perfect timing because it was, you know, becoming spring and warm and no more snow and, and, the, and the children could get outside. So that was to our advantage. Um, nature walks, like you said, um, that was always a big, um, a big, big thing that I always encouraged me every day. Go outside, ride your bike, go for a walk, pick up some sticks, find some rocks. We're gonna maybe we'll paint them in art. You know, just just as as much outdoor as you could get. Um, in some families, you know, that wasn't an option for them uh, so much. 
they didn't have access maybe to, um, you know, an, a backyard in their home. Um, they maybe lived in a different situation. And so maybe going to the park would be an option for them. So um, I would, you know, try to be, I, I try to listen to that too and know some of the circumstances, um, if it would be easy for those parents to find those things um, or not. And um, I, I always wanted, I always felt like I just had to include and have everybody have that flower. Please have your flower tomorrow so that we can do that because I, I just wanted everyone to experience it. Um, and we just we just did the best that we can. You know, if they had a flower or maybe their neighbor had, you know, a flower garden or something, maybe they could go there. But it, it was an encouragement every single day to be outdoors and to be with nature and find things and explore or to dust and clean the home. Somehow the practical life uh, was somehow the parents' favorite, which I thought was hilarious. Like, oh, have them dust our house every day. You should remind them. Um, we're just about at the end, Judy, but I'm going to, before we do the final thank you, uh, Magdalena, one thing we didn't touch on that I think, we did it towards the end, but we created each of the guides sent to their students a uh, a flat Judy or flat Sarah or, or you know a picture of uh, themselves that they sent and asked the children to take around kind of like the flat Stanley book and uh, you got some amazing responses with uh, Miss Flat Judy. Mm -hmm. Yeah I was watching the birds at the bird feeder. Mm -hmm. um, I was swinging on a swing I think. I was I think I was at the sidewalk um, it might have been near the pool too. Um, I think a bathtub at one point. Yeah, it could have been. Um, yeah, they were they were so so sweet. I'm telling you, Joanne. I think that was the one thing that really, um, again, bred, bred, uh, bridged that distance. You know, um, it made us feel a little more connected. But it really warmed my heart too. It just really did. It was just the sweetest thing. They'd have the biggest smile on their face. Um, I think I was even in the lap of one of the stuffed animals too. I think I was, I was right up there with like Teddy. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. you became just as important. I think it really, um, created a beautiful connection for the kids. They were, they missed as, as much distance as we had removed. Um, I think at the end of the day, a virtual platform cannot replace the classroom. And so when they received the picture of their teachers and to have like this, gorgeous Miss Judy on a stick, you know, this little picture. Um, so many parents just expressed, I mean, the kids were just so excited to share their life with Miss Judy. And then, you know, again, the wonders of technology, they were able to let Miss Judy see it all through our Facebook, uh, private Facebook families only page um, and uh, emails to be able to say, Miss Judy, you are here and, and the impact of you guides on these children in their homes uh i think really showed itself in a, a deeper way when they received those how excited those kids were to take them around even for elementary i mean my son initially was like i'm just gonna leave miss maddie on the counter and then one day he was like mom take a picture and i was like oh yes <laughs> and i said oh you're you're taking miss maddie with you she's like she's been with me the whole time and i thought yeah yeah, so it was pretty extraordinary. Judy, <laughs> we're out of time, and um, I can't thank you enough for joining us. Um, I appreciate you stepping out of your comfort zone, just as you did in the spring. And um, Thank you. It was, it was very, very fun. So I, I really enjoyed talking with you and sharing. So, yeah. Always a pleasure. We're going to have to have you back. You're great at this. <laughs> Uh, Judy, uh, just so you know, everyone absolutely loved uh, your share about uh, the flow of the day. That was incredibly helpful for the people that will continue with the online. So thank you for that. Good. Yes. Thank you so much, Judy. I, I'm glad it was helpful. And I'm glad that um, we could share something that um, is, is potentially helpful for someone else. That's my goal. Awesome. Ours too. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you.